Okay. Okay, thank you all for joining us today after a couple of weeks of uh, break. Um, today we're going to um, have Wim Bast and he's going to talk about Declare for, for MPS and what's new uh, in it. Uh, Wim Bast is one of the founders of the Modeling Value Group. And he has a long experience in model-driven development and he has been involved in the development of uh, some standards. He is he's an author and has given many talks about the subject in the early days of model driven development. Uh, now he's working as a, in a, a meta automation consultant and he's helping to make model driven development a successful uh, um, application in tax collection and healthcare in the Netherlands. So I leave you uh, the stage and uh, thank you for uh, uh, presenting. Uh, in, today. Thank you. Okay. Um, the Modeling Value Group is a small organization. It's uh, building open source uh, tools, mainly uh, surrounding uh, um, MPS. Uh, but also other modeling, model-driven technologies. Uh, it provides services to big organizations. And I'm going to show you today our new developments uh, in Declare for MPS. Uh, a lot of those developments, all this, everything is open source. It's a standard plugin for MPS, so you can just activate it if you have an MPS with an internet connection. Um, uh, and the latest development are very, very much driven by the Bumble project. I don't know if you all know about the Bumble project, but it's a big European project. It's about blending and collaboration. And uh, this shows a little bit the topology or informal architecture of all the ingredients. Um, and uh, uh, Declare is, is covering a, a lot of the functionality of the Bumble project. So the idea of the Bumble project is that you have many languages that they can be synchronized uh, uh, or translated or transformed uh, incrementally, bidirectionally, reactiveness, uh, uh, so immediately uh, combined with collaboration. So you have uh, distributed modeling, somebody uh, is somewhere else in, uh, in Europe or in the world, and via the internet, they can immediately, like Google Docs, model. Uh, but you have a kind of the, the ultimate goal is kind of polyglot modeling, meaning that you can model in your language, favorite language syntax, and the other one in a different syntax, and they, that they can collaborate immediately at the same time using different syntaxes. So this combines a lot of the functionalities. Here you see some clients. Um, uh, transformations can be with, between abstract syntaxes or concrete syntaxes and abstract syntaxes. Um, Deferred synchronization can be combined with uh, distributed uh, um, uh, immediate uh, synchronization across different clients. Uh, I'm not going to dive too much in this picture because I think it's much more interesting to just show you the stuff and demo it and then um, see how you can define uh, transformations either between different syntaxes, uh, abstract syntaxes or concrete syntax and abstract syntaxes in, uh, in, uh, in Declare for MPS. Um, one thing I want to stress here is that uh, Declare for MPS has a different approach for synchronization than, for example, Model X. Model X is using a central database. Uh, uh, what we do is actually just create a lightweight synchronization server uh, that enables a kind of peer to peer modeling between different model clients. It doesn't have any state, the state is still on the different clients. This means that all the, uh, the synchronization and all the transformations are incremental. Uh, and uh, in this way, you can switch it on and off or combine it with uh, deferred uh, synchronization via Git repository, whatever you like. Uh, so just a lot of flexibility. You can even connect it with a Model X repository remotely or a transformation that is run on some headless uh, environment. Any combination is possible. Uh, so that's the idea, a lot of flexibility. Um, that's a short introduction. Um, um, 
please interrupt me if you have any question. I like that. Um, Declare is based on an immutable collection framework. It's also open source, also uh, developed by the modeling value group. There is a declare for Java, just easy way to enable declarative uh, uh, programming in pure Java and declare for MPS, which is actually uh, 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 built on top of the base language where you now can uh, define any kind of declarative functionality based on a ex small extension on base language. Sorry, but to, to interrupt, but what, what is the problem you're trying to solve? I, I still don't understand. I'm, I will come to that. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So I think uh, this is the basic problem. Yeah. So the problem is many times you have different DSLs, like in MPS, uh, for editors, for type checking, for generators, uh, uh, for scoping, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, they are uh, uh, not always easy to grasp how they all integrate. For example, in the type check, you have to sometimes wait for a certain type to be resolved, but the type is also used for the scoping, etc. So there is some implied imperative behavior that you sometimes has to know. Uh, uh, and then you have to learn all those different languages and uh, all the quirks and all the examples. So there's a lot of meta DSLs with a lot of different details from the different DSLs. And this is a different approach. Uh, it has actually uh, uh, underneath a single declarative formalism uh, run by the declare engine and the different DSLs, if, if even necessary, <laughs> uh, are all integrated based on a, a single semantical declarative core. Uh, which means there's no order of what, whatever, there's no need to understand uh, imperative behavior. Everything will be solved. All the constraints that you defined will be solved in due course. Uh, so this is a different approach to many different DSLs that are integrated on an imperative level. This is integrated on a declarative level. Yeah. And, and I'm sure this will raise a lot of questions, but I think, again, I will show the demo and then you can see how it is defined. And this is a kind of base for discussion, uh, hopefully at the end, where we can see whether this, what the advantages versus disadvantages are of many different DSLs. So that's uh, the idea. Um, apart from that, having this single uh, formalism uh, also enables synchronization across uh, the internet. So. Uh, everything comes together. Okay. So I prepared uh, two um, uh, uh, instances of uh, MPS and a example of a state machine language. And those two instances are synchronized uh, via a, a server, uh, a synchronization server that exchanges the deltas of the models uh, between them. Uh, and here, so they, these are all the same uh, 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 language, uh, but uh, they are projected, they are presented in a different way. Uh, and in MPS, of course, you can already do that, but there are some, some limitations in, uh, in MPS because the way that you project mostly follows the structure of your underlying uh, 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 conceptual or structure model actually uh, very much. And if you want to deviate from that, it becomes quite complex to create editors uh, for that. Yeah, so that's another issue that we have solved but because we can uh, do incremental transformations, immediate synchronization between two completely different structures uh, and solve the structural conflicts between them. So here, for example, we have a, uh, so first I'm going to show how it behaves, and then we, I'm going to show how it is defined, because that's actually, I think, for this audience, even more interesting uh, than the actual functionality. Yeah. So on the right side, you see a table-like uh, representation of a Moore state machine. So a Moore state machine is a very simple state machine that's in an, uh, an outputs that has one single output for a state, and a, a transition is just 
a transition between two states with a single input, and that's it. Uh, so it's uh, it's a more state machine. Uh, here we have a table-like representation. This is the Java code, which is actually generated uh, uh, for an implementation of the state machine. Here we have a textual-like projection, including a interpreter. So you can also uh, simulate uh, uh, the, the, the state machine. And on the left side, we have this uh, direct metal, uh, direct metal uh, representation of, uh, of the same state machine. Yeah. Uh, so what we can do, a user somewhere can create a new state in the, in the table. table uh, let's say we have a traffic light that is also has a purple uh, color. And then you see that here the purple is already added uh, at the other side of another user. Um, and I want an output, but let's 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 do it collaborative. So I create a new output purple here, and I say it over here that it is purple. Uh, then I immediately see it over here, and also see it over there. And then I could create a transition over here, but it's much more easy to do it over here. So let's create a new input. Uh, go purple, and then switch go purple and then we see the transition over here we see the line over here etc does that make sense and meanwhile you see that the java code is also generated on the fly so everything is happening on the fly and we also created a model checker instead of asking an mps to check the model it constantly checks it and it will give you any response on any any problem that you have here, which can also be defined in the rules in MPS. Um, so I've shown polyglot modeling in practice. Um, uh, 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 are there any questions about this? How, uh, how it works? It's it's just. Um, what if you change the Java code? Sorry. Yeah. Well, change the Java code. Okay. Okay, so if, if I want to change the Java code, then it will actually uh, remove my change. Why? Because I have a unidirectional transformation defined for it, which means you cannot override anything that is derived by the rules. Of course, you can create rules that gave, give you the possibility to add your own code in it where it is not derived, uh, but uh, in this case, it's a unidirectional transformation, and it's active. It means uh, the change is removed because the the transformation uh, uh, takes over. Does it make sense? Uh, so, yeah, thanks. Uh, um, in um, declare for NPS, you can derive, you can create transformations. In place, out place, bidirectional, unidirectional, three directional, circular, uh, whatever you like, a chain of transformations. Uh, and uh, it has a kind of um, ripple out semantic, means that, which means if you change A, then preferably B is adjusted to A, or vice versa, then change back. But if you have only one unidirectional uh, rule for that, then it's changed back. Uh, it's uh, it's the way it works. So that's the uh, underlaying semantics of the declarative formalism is that it tries to ripple out the change and prefers to change other things than the one that you have changed by a user. Uh, but if that's not possible, it will anyway solve the constraint and then uh, it will uh, change be, be changed back to the start state. So that's the sim simple principle behind all the rules. You don't have to think about order except for that rule. Um, so now I'm going to uh, show you how that is defined. I think uh, the best way to do that is to uh, switch to one project.
Um, here we have uh, a language specification. And within that language specification, you can add a rules aspect. The rule aspect is part of the declare for MPS plugin functionality. And in that rule aspect, you can again define different aspects, but then based on that single formalism. So it's an alternative way to define uh, uh, language aspects, if you like. In this case, we have done some base uh, uh, checking and uh, consistency checking and that kind of stuff uh, of the underlying uh, abstract syntax. We have uh, the grammatical uh, syntax specification. Uh, we have a simulator. Uh, we have uh, a two Java, which is the binary uh, uh, transformation. We have a two table and a two text. And the two text and the two table are each other's uh, opposite uh, uh, transformations. Um, for example, um, let's take um, an easy one. Um, uh, well, they're all easy, actually. Um, here we have input to table. And it just states, sorry, output. For It's a rule set. You can see that's just a different aspect on the output, uh, there's an editor for that. Uh, there's some behavior and we have an output to table uh, rule set for the two table aspect and it creates a table output. Uh, that's the one that you have uh, seen over here. Um, let's see that. So this is a table output. Maybe check it over there. So what you're actually doing is you just create a transformation specification as if there's no bidirectionality or whatever. You don't have to think about that. You just declare here that there should be a table output. And this, by the way, is just an alternative uh, um, uh, representation of a, a lightweight quotation in uh, in. Uh, in MPS uh, base language. And there are actually two rules over here. This is the rule that says there should be a table output of the concept type table output. And the, and the second rule is its name should always be equal to my name. Here then, we can reuse this because if there's a state, I need to create a row in my state machine table where the name is equal to my name and the two state header of that row, its output is equal to the output uh, of, of my state. Uh, and then again, the same uh, table output and uh, we're creating a complete state machine table for a state machine where the name is the same. The inputs are the inputs and then the table inputs, but we sort it in a way that it preserves the, sort of the order of the target. And uh, the outputs are the table outputs. And the, from the states, we take the rows and we sort, like, we sort it like the rows. And so each state has a row, etc. So in this case, we have created a table with some inputs and outputs and rows. So uh, that's in the direction of uh, the two table. In the two text, it's very similar. Um, um, here we have a text input for a table input. Yeah. And it uh, follows the same pattern. And if you go to the model rule, so you can also define rule sets on a model, not only on notice, but also on a repository or on a module or a model. Uh, it says, well, for any state machine in this model, sorry, for any state machine in this model, within the same model, there should be a state machine table. And it just refers to the same state machine table. Uh, 
So now we're creating an in-place transformation uh, that if I create here a new state machine, it will also create a new state machine table and vice versa. And so um, hope that makes sense. Everything here is for the rest base language. Uh, if you take uh, the state machine to Java, then you can you, then you can see that you can also use uh, the actual syntax of your target uh, uh, language in your transformation. So you just create a quotation here, and we have added a kind of label syntax within the quotation, so that you can also use parts of your quoted uh, targets in other rules, as if they are uh, defined as attributes. So this is just syntactical sugar, but you can create transformations between languages and, uh, and using the syntax of the language itself that you are uh, uh, transforming. Um, another example is the... Uh, the diagram uh, 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 rules. Um, this is actually simply stating that I reuse a, a circle shape and it's some kind of filled note, which means that uh, it's a generic functionality that preserves the layout of the position in this case. Of, of whatever kind of shape it is. So there's a kind of library that you can reuse here. We extend it. So we say it's a state circle. Uh, the line color is black. Uh, the text is the name of the node, which means the state. And uh, uh, the output name with a slash between. And the radius of the circle is some constant. Uh, with a, the length of the text multiplied by 1.5, whatever. Yeah. So whatever you can, whatever you do, anything will be automatically solved. You don't have to subscribe. It will just follow uh, uh, the, 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 the circle uh, size and the color or whatever based on it. So in this case, for example, the color of the state is when it is active, it's pink and otherwise is, it is light yellow. So if I take the diagram over here and I create a uh, uh, traffic light uh, and I'm simulating this, so I want to uh, go green, then you see that also in the diagram here the color shifts uh, because of the changes that I create. So um, it's very compact. You have a huge amount of flexibility. There are only a limited amount of concepts that you need to uh, know about, uh, but the actual specification most of the time is even more compact than what you will do, find if you want to create it with a specific DSL in, in, in MPS. And you get incremental behavior and, and, and reactive behavior and remote synchronization for free. Uh, that's that's uh, that's uh, that's the whole idea. There's a complete um, uh, functional layer underneath um, to show you a small um, example here. Uh, a standard example, I would uh, I would say. Um, Wait a minute, there's something wrong here. Oh, I have problems with my screen. Most of the um, and with this. Yeah. Here we have a uh, rule set 
um, for a uh, very simple uh, test uh, concept, which says uh, I'm creating a big integer attribute from a integer that I've defined uh, uh, on the structure of this uh, of this test. Um, I'm uh, uh, I want the Fibonacci from from that uh, big integer, and I want to get it because that becomes huge Fibonacci. I want to uh, present it with a max radius. So I create an attribute here that uh, uh, takes the Fibonacci and makes a string of it. And then in the editor uh, in NPS, I just uh, refer here to the Fibonacci string. So I can also show the attributes of an arbitrary type. You don't have to have to delimit the type of, of the of the nodes with any any Java type that you like. And then you can also present it here in in your editor. Um, and the Fibonacci itself is actually an extension method. So you can define a rule sets with extension methods on uh, which are uh, polymorphically uh, dispatched, uh, 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 dynamic dispatching based on the most uh, 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 specific type of the parameters and of the disk. Uh, and in this case, the Fibonacci is defined in a very silly way. Uh, as you can see, no optimization whatsoever. You don't have to think about that because that's all solved underneath. It's a declarative language. And then you can uh, uh, do some nice Fibonacci uh, uh, thing. So it's quite fast uh, also uh, from a uh, functional perspective. So you can do a pure functional, uh, uh, whatever kind of calculations uh, also in uh, in this uh, in this formalism. Okay, uh, so this was was a kind of speed run of uh, what is in uh, declare for NPS. Um, what I have shown, a lot of the stuff is uh, uh, is not in the um, uh, um, in the uh, in the uh, master. Uh, uh, branch yet. So there's a lot of, I've just created a demo of all the things that we are developing and have developed. And there will be a new release for the MPS uh, meetup. Uh, hopefully we are also going to present uh, over there. Um, uh, and uh, I, like, I like to dive in uh, to any corner that you like. <laughs> Okay, so there, there are a couple of questions from the chat. Um, so okay. Jürgen, for example, asked what happens uh, when, is, when is, there is a syntax error in one of the editors in the example you were showing us before. Uh, we see two instances running you together. A syntax error. Um, you mean, for example, that if I uh, add a new state over here, then here are syntax errors. So this is a syntax error. And then you see the syntax error here uh, uh, also because of the checking. Uh, and it depends on your rules what, what it actually does. So a syntax error is an error that always is an error in the node structure state. Uh, the attributes are all, always guaranteed to uh, fulfill uh, the, the constraints, if they are mandatory, they will never be not mandatory. Then the engine will crash and will give you an error that your specification is incorrect. However, if you create a mandatory um, uh, uh, thing like an output for a state uh, reference in, in MPS, then of course that can still be zero because it's, it's a constraint that is not enforced by MPS, but actually should be solved by the user. And then you can define in your rules whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. So in this case, uh, uh, there is no output here, and the name is still not. Uh, um, uh, there is an easy way uh, to do that. You, you can use, the, uh, for example, uh, the uh, Elvis operator, uh, but we extended the Elvis operator with an else uh, so that you don't have to do all the kind of checking uh, for incomplete uh, uh, specifications. 
that makes sense. I hope that's an answer. Thanks. Um, there's another question from Yenek. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the names correctly. Uh, so he's, he's asking, um, with respect to the presentation you gave in uh, at the, at the MPS meetup in October 2019, uh, what are the ad new additions in the declare for MPS? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so the collaboration aspect is new. Um, the, 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 the methods are new, are new. so we, did, we, we now have these uh, uh, polymorphic uh, 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 methods uh, uh, that you can override uh, uh, with polymorphic uh, uh, dispatching. Uh, we have the extension mechanism, so the fact that you can create uh, rules even on things like a big integer or uh, something that uh, is not per se a struct or a, a node or a model or a module. Um, the, uh, the other thing that I've shown is the, um, the to Java uh, syntax with uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, usage of quotations, including the labels so that you can refer to parts within uh, the generator stuff is also new, but uh, the fact that you can use those uh, labels. Um, the syntax, or the, the diagrammatical syntax, but actually not the diagrammatical syntax, it's much more broader. It's if anything of swing that you can use in your declarative specification, so any kind of form or whatever. So you can also, for example, create a, a language for a form design, and then you can interpret it, the form design within uh, within uh, within uh, uh, the claim for MPS using the framework. Uh, so any 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 swing component uh, can be used. Also a drop down box or or or, or, or a menu or or whatever. So it is a very uh, uh, rich uh, way to define any kind of editor. Uh, uh. So that's also new. Uh, and then probably I forgot a lot of other stuff. Oh yeah, the scalability is improved. Uh, so we have again a factor of 20 or something, uh, a performance and scalability improvement, and we're still working on it to make it even faster and supporting even bigger uh, projects. That's also an addition. Um, and then probably I forgot a lot. Okay, thanks. Um, next, there is Nico asking, uh, where do you store the current input output or state uh, from the simulation um, in the examples you showed? Um, store the output. Okay, so the, 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 well, the pens are, of course, you can specify it, but it's only volatile or whether it's actually persisted. In this case, we created a persistent choice. So if you go to the state simulation, um, then um, there is a current output. Um, uh, so if some state is active, then the current output of the complete state machine is the output of this state. Right? So that's a simple and the current output uh, is something that we actually persist because uh, it's part of the structure. So if it's if you want to persist something, for example, uh, the edge of a, uh, uh, this is actually persisted. So that this layout and uh, 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 can be, uh, it is persisted when I leave the, uh, and switch off and switch it on again, then I get the same layout back. But it's persisted by notice. Uh, so that is all translated to a structure in in your language. And anything that is purely an attribute, like these kind of attributes, on a, a rule set are not persisted. And so whatever you like uh, in that uh, sense. But this is the way it is uh, currently persisted because um, 
uh, I think if you go to the um, state machine, yeah, you have the current state, the current input, current output. Uh, so there it is. Okay, thanks. Um, then uh, we have Sasha is asking um, um, about the memory consumption. If you have experienced uh, some issues, because you notice that your uh, memory limit, uh, of the memory limit of your MPS instance is set to thirty gigabytes. <laughs> yeah, but we only use uh, a very small amount for this example. <laughs> but we have uh, big projects now. And therefore, uh, I created uh, 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 this amount of memory. Um, uh, yeah, how 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 do, how should I define it? Um, my experience is in in MPS. If you have a big model and you want to actually generate code from it, it also uh, consumes a lot of memory and a lot of time. A really big model. Um, um, uh, the, but then that's something perhaps you do not always do, uh, uh, and not everybody does it. And so that's perhaps uh, a counterpoint. Um, in our case, it will consume it anyhow, yeah? because it's reactive, it will load into memory. So we improved uh, uh, quite uh, uh, some bit on that, but we're not uh, at the end of that uh, improvements, but we're already supporting mid-size projects very well without a lot of uh, memory. This memory is actually allocated in my environment because we have a clinical uh, um, a decision modeler created in, uh, in Declare for MPS, and we have models for breast cancer, cancer. Uh, with all the uh, medical knowledge in that, and it, there's a huge of uh, logic here behind that, um, and yeah, that's kind of projects that, that we are running uh, with it currently. Um, yeah. I can't make it any more concrete. Okay, um, and it also very much depends on the on the amount of attributes, on the complexity of your rules. Um, uh, there are many factors that uh, that are are in place. Yeah. Oh yeah, another another thing that we have added actually. Now I'm thinking of that. You can also debug the rules now, so you can just place a uh, just as a debug uh, uh, bullet on the left side of your uh, in a, in a rule uh, like this. Uh, let's let's take something with a rule. Okay, so you can do this, and then if you run. Uh, you run uh, the change, then you will get a um, uh, uh, a trace of it, and you can click on the trace. You see all the data, see all the stuff. So it's a very easy way to uh, uh, debug uh, debug your rules. That's so another addition that we have uh, created, uh, which I forgot to mention. Any more questions? Okay, there is still um, Sasha is asking um, uh, what is what is uh, if there is anything special about the immutable collections library that you uh, implemented and otherwise why did you decide to implement it okay. and and there is also a question about uh, may, maybe a related one uh, about how do you handle race conditions in uh, renaming elements, for example. So when two users uh, make some conflicting changes. Okay, yeah. Um, um, first, the collection framework. The collection framework is a immutable collection framework because the underlying uh, formalism is a kind of, uh, so in, anything apart from the equations, so these are equations. Uh, uh, so these are the actual constraints. Those two things should be always equal uh, or become equal. Um, uh, that's the only thing that has a real side effect. There are no other side effects. There are no changes uh, allowed, and the rest is functional. Which and we we do that with an underlying uh, uh, collection framework, which is an immutable collection framework. Uh, and since the engine is run, running in parallel, so there are uh, 
uh, a number of threads running all the root rules in, in parallel for performance uh, reasons, uh, all the effects of those rules need to be merged. Uh, and uh, so we have a collection framework which can be is able to merge in parallel many uh, uh, states at the same time. So the actual state of the engine is just one single immutable value. We have optimized in such a way that if you change that state, that most of the state uh, of the previous state and the new state are actually shared in memory. And it, it actually, when you do an equals or whatever, it removes any redundant state in memory uh, uh, there. So in this way, uh, it compensates for the extra overhead that we have for the subscription uh, uh, because we subscribe all each rules, each atom rule subscribes to whatever it's read uh, and writing. Uh, and that's of course increases the memory consumption, but we have optimized uh, it uh, using a, a special defined uh, collection framework. It's based on hash uh, trees. So it's a balanced hash trees, and that's why they re can re uh, easily reuse uh, memory and quite fast. Um, so a pure functional value immutable collection framework. Um, uh, the other question is, I, I believe, uh, 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 conflicts. Um, 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 if if two users, yeah, the, the, the problem is if you read because that only uh, applies to a distributed uh, environment which are synchronized and two users are making a change. And I'm hesitating to say making a change at the same time because whatever is that, the same time if you are remotely. Uh, connected, but again, there, there is a synchronization engine. So uh, it means that uh, uh, at the heart of the uh, synchronization mechanism, there is a single server that serializes the different changes. And then it's actually quite easy. The last one wins if it's a conflict and if it's mergeable uh, 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 because of the fact that uh, the changes are not conflicting, then uh, uh, they are both uh, the case. So it depends on the rules, of course, which are conflicting and which are not conflicting. But the idea is here that you will never crash and it's not really a problem because there are only small changes. Uh, so it, it, it almost never happens uh, that you actually have to uh, retype your change uh, because the other one did it too. And so it's, it's, it's uh, Model X has a very similar uh, behavior, but the granularity of it in declare is smaller. Other, I don't know even for sure, but I believe it's also slot uh, object uh, feature based uh, granularity. Uh, uh, so. Um, yeah, did I forget something? Debugging. Oh, you want a demo of debugging? Somebody wants a demo of debugging. Um, let's take a uh, simulation as a uh, 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 over here. Over here, I see all the rules executed. Uh, debugs, you can see what uh, you, this rule is executed uh, because the output uh, 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 has changed. Um, and it has, and it's, it's run on this object. So I can just navigate from the rule to the rule to the object on which the rule was active. And uh, here you can see uh, that uh, it has read the current state, which was orange. Uh, over here, and this is another example. Um, here you can see that it actually uh, uh, writes something. Uh, so here, here it actually solves uh, 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 the change. Uh, the rest is just uh, checking uh, whether it's still consistent. Uh, 
so if and if I switch it off again, uh, then uh, I have to restart the engine to get it removed because it's uh, kind of incremental. We still want to have kind of clear messages for that. By the way, if you make a mistake, you have a similar feedback. And for example, if you have rules that are circular and are running forever, then you get a kind of tree of triggering and then you can navigate within this uh, environment, the rules and uh, why they are circular and solve your uh, consistency issues. Um, um, there is another, shall, shall I just go continue with uh, answering the questions? <laughs> Lorenzo, because the new ones are coming in. Yes. Or did uh, I some of them. Uh... If you want, you can also, you can also read uh, the questions directly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's there's um, apart, of course, from the from the from the notice itself, uh, meaning if you do a update or a merge or from a Git, then it will just work in the same way. Uh, so you will synchronize. A bunch of changes, but not because they're made by hand, but because the file system changes, uh, because uh, your Git integration uh, is done. So there, of course, implicitly for models, uh, MPS models, uh, that all works. There's no other stuff, but we have a native construct, which is also an addition that I forgot to mention, by the way. Um, we have a native uh, construct. Um, um, uh, which actually uh, you can uh, react to changes on the on the RBT thread within a write transaction, and vice versa. So you could uh, uh, create your own like plugin to synchronize with whatever kind of imperative thing in Java uh, for that reason. But you have to really build that. There's no. Uh, out of the box support for for file synchronization apart from the model files. Um, yeah, I, I had a question. Like, I'm I'm not familiar with MPS, so feel free to okay. just ignore the question. But I don't understand the 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 context of this of this thing. So, what 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 is MPS for? And what is the problem it's trying to solve? Because, like, I see this ID. I, I guess that's MPS ID. But how it's used by users or customers? What what okay. products do you sell? Or okay, 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 okay. So MPS is from JetBrains. It's 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 not built by us. I'm just demoing a plugin for for MPS. And a lot of the things that you have seen are perhaps not really understandable if you do not understand MPS. I, I. I thought this community was quite aware of MPS, most of them, uh, but it's it's uh, a flagship language uh, specification DSL uh, environment. It's a meta modeling environment. You can create any kind of DSL, uh, define transformations or, or code generations, editors uh, for it, uh, type checkers, uh, you name is it. There, is there is there a, 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 a popular language, a known language that is defined by NPS? Well, the whole idea of MPS is that it creates DSLs. So they are most of the guy, most uh, are, are domain specific. So no, I, really, no, but for example, Yak. Yeah, 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 give an example. I was involved, uh, I am actually involved with the text office of the Netherlands. And uh, they have created Aleph, uh, which is a law execution factory, <laughs> which is a formalism to have a projectional specification in controlled Dutch language of the Dutch tax law, and it generates Java code. And, the, and for more than five years now, um, uh, the Dutch uh, uh, government uh, tax organization calculates all the uh, uh, income taxes and more than 50 different tax uh, 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 law uh, aspects in the Netherlands based on Aleph. So, uh, so it's huge. The the, the whole uh, uh, Aleph is is something that currently the complete Dutch economy is based on. Uh, any income tax, any uh, uh, tax from all uh, organizations are driven driven by it. And Aleph is built using MPS. So you can imagine that 
uh, there is a good contract between uh, 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 the, the Dutch tax office and, Jet, and JetBrains to keep NPS alive for a very, very long time. Yeah. So how, how does the user interact with this Aleph? Like he, 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 okay, he, the he user uses... in this case, it, well, but just to, as I've shown here. Yeah, so in this case, I'm a user that are in, is interested in creating state machines. So I want to create, I'm Canon, and I want to create a new super printer. And I want to check whether that, uh, 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 I want to generate a code that, uh, that runs uh, uh, the printer specification in terms of a state machine uh, of, uh, for example, um, uh, 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 SysML uh, or something like that. Yeah. So, um, so uh, but on the other hand, so we have people that build and design uh, uh, um, uh, uh, print, big printer uh, machines at Canon, but we also have uh, people that are experts in terms of tax law that define the tax law in a formal way using uh, using it. And it depends on the editors that you create or whatever. So I just shown you how, for example, you can edit uh, uh, state machines in three different syntaxes. So the, so the customer will, of Aleph, or will use MPS to be able to enter stuff in this language. Yeah. And a plugin for your DSL. So this is a little bit of strange example. I have one project here where I've defined the syntax of the state machine and the interpreter and the simulator and the code generator and whatever within the same project as the example. Yeah. So of course, normally this will be wrapped into a kind of plugin uh, like an Aleph plugin or a clinical uh, knowledge mo modeling plugin and that, will, and that will be used in MPS. But you can tailor MPS specific to a certain user and get rid of all the overhead um, um, uh, uh, of the actual language development for that environment. And then you can just this kind of editors or whatever you want to define. So it's a meta programming system. That's uh, uh, what it is. So it has a lot of users, uh, serious projects are running on it. Uh, so it's yet branch, which is not as, uh, uh, an amateur uh, uh, company. <laughs> um, any more? Uh, there are a lot of questions. Uh, the the, the real-time synchronization works out of the box for any MPS model. You don't have to create any rules for it. Uh, so. Uh, the, the, the collaboration is orthogonal to anything else, but you still have to have the MPS, the Clever MPS plugin for it. That's one of the questions, I believe. Um, uh, the URL of the law system, the law system is not open source yet. You're going to open source it, so I can't give you that. It's it's proprietary. Um, uh, the clinical uh, decision model is also become to become open source, which is... Uh, will be a standard for defining clinical knowledge. Um, um, the web stuff, uh, we didn't uh, create web stuff, but the Model X is uh, addressing also uh, that aspect. And there are some standard functionalities uh, of MPS to uh, get your editors, your projectional editors run into a browser, although it's quite pixel based. So that is something already you get for free. And there are other um, uh, initiatives, probably Jos Warmer has, for example, presented uh, his solution for a projectional editor on the web. These can all be integrated. Uh, so it's, it's um, independent of MPS models, engine. Real-time collaboration engine. Yeah. So the real-time collaboration engine is actually not specific for MPS, but for Declare, we plan to make also an integration with EMF, and then you will have polyglot modeling at the same time with an Eclipse user and a MPS user. Yeah. So that's a uh, next step because most of the logic of all the transformations and all the synchronization is actually in Declare and not in Declare for MPS. 
Okay, I will I will stop the uh, recording in the meantime so that if somebody wants to ask some questions offline, uh, you can.